Hi guys, it's Becky, and I just got my December Magical Mystery Bead Box from Jesse James Beads, and I've got it ready to open. Um, it kind of sounds like I've got some loose things kind of floating around in there, so we'll get this open. We'll see what's inside of it, how it looks. Um, before I open it, though, I do want to just kind of mention that, like, address last month's box, or sorry, November's box, because, like, I'm sure a lot of you who watch my channel regularly saw that, and um, when you did, uh, you saw that I was kind of disappointed in that box, and I thought and thought and thought about the reason why that was so disappointing to me, because I mean, it was still beads, it was still, you know, several different types of beads, several different um, uh, things, but I think the, the, oh, it was especially those pearls, the pearls were the worst. Um, but I think the thing that made that box such a disappointment to me is because when I subscribed to the Jesse James bead, uh, the Magical Mystery Bead Box, and when I purchase, um, you know, their uh, bead mixes, and when I purchase the uh, events that they put on, um, it's not just the beads. It's not about the bead mix. It's not about those things. It's about the experience that they curate. Like they're very good at taking a theme and curating an entire experience in a box for you. Like the uh, summer camp was a fantastic experience. It wasn't just about the beads. It wasn't just about the project. It was about the whole thing, the whole experience. And so that box was just, it wasn't an experience. It wasn't something where they told you a story with the beads. It wasn't something where they painted a picture or made you feel like the dripping moss and the humid um, air of the bio. It was just some beads that they pulled off a shelf and sent to you and said, here you go. And so I think for me, more than anything, that's why it was so disappointing. I mean, we're not going to talk about the quality of the pearls because like, Again, it wasn't about the beads, it was about not having that experience. So I'm hoping that this box is gonna be an experience, something that I can open up and, you know, step into a little world maybe, or hear, follow a story or experience something when I open this box. So we're gonna open this up and find out if that is what they've done and that, that is what they've come back to, because that's Jesse James Speed's strength, I think, is that making an experience for you with the beads and with the findings, not just the beads. It's never just the beads. So let's see what we've got on this. Uh-huh. And it looks like we've got another artist box. This one is Gustav Klimt. That's the kiss. I think that's his most famous painting. Okay, so the kiss charm pair. Bead Mix and Hygieia, Bead Mix and Water Serpents, Bead Mix and the Portrait of Emily Floge, Bead Mix is Woman in Gold, Clasp Set, Paper Chain, Judith and Holfrina's Statement Tassel. Oh, wow. Yeah, the uh, those are some more of his paintings that he did with this. Oh, man, he was a, um, a symbolist painting. That's where, like, all of these little doodly-doos, they've got, like, symbols that represented something to him um, in his different paintings. Um, he was part of like an Art Nouveau movement, but uh, he used actual gilt, like gold, um, gold leaf in his paintings. And he was one of the first artists to do, to do that. Whoop. So yeah, we've got the woman in gold. A lot of his paintings were of women. Um, not a lot of them were safe for work. A lot of them had, uh, like, nudity and that sort of thing. Oh, that's why we had beads rolling around. This this is popped open. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's fine. We'll we'll dig through and find all of our beads for that portrait of Emily Floge. All right. And this one, the water serpents are loose. The water serpents are loose. I repeat. <laughs> Look how beautiful that little painting was. And then we've got Hygieia. And 
This is Judith and the head of Holofernes tassel. This is a really big tassel. That was great. And are these, is this beading thread? Oh no, it's wire. Oh, some craft wire. Is that, it looks like 22 gauge. Let me, let me pull out some of my 22 gauge and we'll see. We'll compare it with that. All right. And then we've got some clasps. So this is, this is a, a curated experience. This is an actual experience. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we are back to that. This is, this is happy. Oh, take a look at this. There's an actual, the Kiss Charm Pair. Oh, it's the actual painting in these charms under this cabochon and there's two of them that is fantastic and then we've got some paper clip chain and i'm going to pull out gently all of this packaging material because i think i've got all of my little beads from that hanging out inside of here I don't want to accidentally pull out my beads because I'm going to be dumping this out to get all these beads out of the box. They they escaped the, the box. You know how, like, uh, sometimes I have trouble opening up the, the bead mixes because it's taped shut? I think this is, this is why they tape them shut, guys, so that things like this don't happen. All right. It looks like all of the beads are whole. There aren't any broken beads from that, that rough and tumble experience that they had going through there. Yeah, no broken beads. Everything's good. Um, it is quite a lot of colors in here. A lot of golds, a lot of golds, which is appropriate for this artist. Okay, so... We have several bead mixes to sort through. We have several items that are just going to be too large for my box. Ugh, Jane, look at that. Um, and since we have already opened this guy, our water serpents, let's start our organizing. Let's start our sorting. We've got our chain. I'm going to go ahead and stick my chain. Um, in one of my little sections here. I'm going to stick my clasps in one of my sections. And then we can start sorting our other bead mixes. Oof. There we go. These are some heavy duty, definitely reusable bags. And you know what? A lot of folks will just go ahead and use the organization materials that they come in the boxes and things like that. But you know, you know how I am. If I don't, <laughs> if I can't see it. All together in one box it doesn't get used as well so we've got let me actually pull these out so we've got a better look at them we've got a very large lobster clasp we have two fancy magnetic clasps one in silver and one in gold with rhinestones and then we've got a tiny but rhinestoney let me get this there you go there's some sparkle toggle clasp. This would be so great on a bracelet, I think. All right. Now, let's start sorting these beads. I'm going to start separating them out here, and then I'm going to open probably this one and separate, start sorting them as well, because it looks like we've got some of these that will go together with others. Now I've got some black beads. We've got some, two of these elongated drops that are faceted. We have some, I don't know if these are black or dark brown, but they are some rondelles. We have these really fun beads. Take a look at that. They're like round on one side and then fasted on another. And on the round side, or on the round bits, they have this gold 
on them. This is very, very like, like gold leaves. <laughs> like these are super, super awesome actually. And because they've got some black in them, I'm going to go ahead and stick them with my other black beads. It's like we've got a couple of cloisonne beads. These are really gorgeous with purple flowers and the gold outlines on them. And I will find that in a minute. It just fell down there. That's fine. We've got some purple lava beads. And I think because these have purple in them, I'm going to go ahead and put these purple lava beads with them. We have several of these small rose beads, and they feel very lightweight. So they are probably either acrylic or resin, these rose beads. And then we've got these pink sparkly beads, They're very tiny. I'm gonna stick these with my rose beads. They're a beautiful, beautiful mauve color. We have four of these very sparkly faceted coin beads in orange. And we've got several of these faceted rondelles in the same color. And these cube beads are like half and half color. It's like halfway, like this opalescent color. And then we've got this kind of orangey color on the other edge of it. I really like that. That is a really gorgeous bead. All right. And then we've got these metal rhinestone beads with the gold in them. We have some very small rhinestone rondelle spacers. I'm going to put gold things over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe I'm not counting right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of these smaller pearls. And these pearl beads are very lightweight, so they are probably not glass pearls. These matte finish in a really light like makes me think of this color makes me think of like a vanilla cream or something. So it's not quite white. It's got kind of a, a brownie tinge to it. And we have some, these are glass beads with like a splashy finish on them in yellows and greens. And these coin beads with the diagonal faceting. It looks like they are double sided. One side, well, they've got two different colors. They've got one color with like yellowy on it and the other with blue and silver. That is really cool. And they're like a halfway point between these yellow green beads and these sort of small barrel beads that are this really light blue. So we have all of these colors that came from and were inspired by this water serpents painting. So let's take a look at Hygieia. That's the painting that this was inspired by. So we're going to have some reds in here. And this one, this one is taped. That's, that's probably why it didn't um, open itself up. Hold on, let me get, move the tape on the sides. All right. Ooh, oh, look at this. Holy cow, you guys. 
All right, so we've got our red beads, of course. We've got a lot of gold and gray. So we've got some bead cages. They have a hole at the top and the bottom. And then you can put a bead inside of it or several beads while you're making things. Maybe one of these, maybe one of these, maybe some of this. So we've got several of these bead cages. I'm gonna set these over here next to these other gold findings. Um, it looks like we've got a couple of different colors of gold. Like this is a more yellowy gold and this is a more rosy gold. This rosy gold matches the gold on this chain and these yellow gold matches the gold on these other findings over here. It's not exactly rose gold, but it's rosier and we have a little snake charm with some sparkle and bling on that. That is really cool. I, I like that charm. I am going to put the charm in here. I'm going to have a whole charm section. We're going to stick those in there. And probably tassels. Look at these leather tassels. Le or suede tassels. I don't know if they're leather or suede. We'll, we'll figure that out later. But then we've got some gold stripey laser etched beads. So it's like we've got six of these. I'm going to set those over here. For now, we have a couple of these spacers. I'm going to set them there. And then we've got these metal wavy disc beads. And I'm going to set them there for now, too, because we will get those all sorted later. And we've got a couple of fasted drop beads. They're flat drops. And I'm going to set these over here next to these blue-gray ones. And all of these clay, these feel like clay. These clay rondelles, I'm going to set over here with them too. I, li I like sorting by colors. And so we've got four of these larger rondelles with this bright red color and a bit of an iridescent finish, like an AB finish on them. Uh, these do not have an AB finish. They are just this bright red color. But we do have more of these diagonal faceted coin beads and several of these smaller rondelles. That is fantastic. That's a great bead mix. I like that bead mix. All right, so let me get the tape off of this portrait of Emily Floge. There we go. So like Gustav Klimt actually worked as a um, muralist. He painted a lot of murals, but he lost his job because he kept painting naked, la naked ladies in his murals. And people didn't like that. Look at these beaded components. Oh, fantastic. We've got ourselves some bead woven components. Looks like this was using some uh, brick stitch around these donuts in the center. And that center donut has a really nice sheen on it. But these are connectors that we can use. Connect them on both ends to some things. And then we've got a bunch of blues and purples, more mauves. A lot of these are really like Art Nouveau-y kind of colors. All right, let's pull out these purples and lilacs and mauves. We have two of these square beads. Now the hole runs straight through from one end to the other. So they sit like a square and not as a diamond on your things. I'm going to set these over here next to my other purple beads. 
we have some larger roses. And again, these are lightweight, so they are probably either resin or acrylic. But they're also really fun beads to work with. And like, I don't have a problem working with resin or acrylic beads. Because they're so lightweight, you can often add them without adding a lot of weight to like earrings um, and have a really big impact with them. All right, and then we've got some, looks like this is a simple cut. Beads with this darker purple. It's kind of a dusky purple. Oh, you know what I should do? I should do an art with these because there's a lot of these colors that would be so much fun to paint with. I, sh I should do a, a art and beading video using this. All right. Now we've got some of these cube beads. They have an AB finish, but they've got this dark, like, gray color behind them. So I'm going to stick these down here with these guys because they're going to go really well. And then we've got some more of these diagonal faceted coin beads and I love this type of bead I've mentioned this before I really really love this type of bead it looks like I'm missing one of them and these have this beautiful silver like finish on them they are shiny shiny and they look like disco balls all right now I don't have a separate silver things section so I'm going to set these silver beads here these silver beads, which are kind of like twist beads with the way that they are shaped. Got several of these. I'm going to set them over here with those. And we have a couple of these rhinestone studded spacers. I'm going to set these over here with these other guys, with the sparkly guys. Then we've got some wavy gold, not quite discs, they're like elongated discs, um, but they're kind of more of a matte finish, whereas this is shiny gold, this is more of a matte gold. I'm going to set those together. And then we've got our dark blue, our navy blue drop beads, they have kind of a pearl finish on them. I'm actually going to go ahead and set these here. And then our smaller beads, you've got these blue bicones. Is that capri blue? Is that what color of blue that is? And then we've got some AB finish rice beads. I'm going to set these over here with this one and because we've got this AB finish on these I'm going to set them over here with our diagonal faceted beads that have like a multi-hued finish on them all right now one more bead mix and then we can pull out the rest of this and then get figure out where we're going to put these in here Okay, one more bead mix. Oh, look at this finding. This is fantastic. Look at all of that sparkle. This would be so much fun to use some of these other beads and findings in. Mm. I'm I'm just thinking of ways that I could like dangle this from the middle of this so it's in the middle of the thing. Maybe a couple of these. No, one of them. Smaller bead. Will these fit in the cage? No, they will not. 
I'm going to figure out how to, how to make this into something spectacular. I promise you. We'll figure out how to put these all together, but look at this gorgeous, gorgeous pendant. All right. I'm setting this over here. It is special. It's probably going to need two sections to lay down so that it'll fit. But look at all the gold in here. This is so many gold beads and so much sparkle. And we've got some hoops, like they're hammered hoops with a little hole on one top, but I bet we could beat around this or do something in between with these. These are really, really fun components. And then we've got some hoops. These are solid hoops that don't have a hole in them at all. We could probably do some beading with these too. We could have some real fun with these or some wire wrapping around it. We got some wire guys. We got some wire. Okay, no, we're gonna use some wire with these. Oh my gosh, what new? No. Maybe, or maybe this one? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having ideas instead of sorting. I apologize for that. But, all right, we've got some plain, round, shiny, coin beads. Now these are also really lightweight, so I'm guessing that they are not metal, but again, because they're lightweight, they could add a lot of pop and oomph to what you're making without adding a lot of weight. So that's great for that. And then we've got these more matte beads. I'm, I'm going to have to have a whole other section for, for my gold beads. We've got some faceted square cube beads that are a very gold. Got some black beads. All right, black and gold. These are table cuts, and we've got four of these rectangular table, table cuts. I'm setting them over here with my other black beads, and these two, I, these feel lightweight as well. So they're resin or acrylic. But again, these would be fantastic in earrings and they will not weigh down your ears if you're wearing them. Oh my gosh, big, big beads. All right, we're gonna set all of these here. Now these are just a grown up version of those diagonal faceted beads. Let me just clean off some of my fingerprints from them so you can see them a little bit better. So we've got the hole that runs this way so when they sit on the thing this fastening goes from left to right or from right to left if you're going up or down so these are the mommy and daddy ones of these other ones that that uh that i like so much <laughs> all right we've got a couple of window beads that have the gold along the outside. I'm gonna set these over here with these gray beads. And then we've got some of these really light, like jonquil colored, fasted coin beads. I'm gonna set them over here with the pearl and others. And I think these are gonna go with those. And then we've got some drops and these are like a matte gold drop right there at the top. I'm going to put these in the same segment that I've got my snake pendant and my tassels because they are like, um, like that. I don't know if these are going to fit in here at all. I may be setting these on top when I close this because they are very large. I'm not sure that this will fit in here either. Nope, this is also very large. So I'm gonna have several of these sitting on top, but I do have room to put those rings and these connectors in there. So that we've got those. I'm going to put these diagonal beads 
maybe the square beads go in here. Will all of these fit in the same section? That's the question. Here we go. I suppose I could knock down that, that little section and have all of these all together. But eh, that just feels like more work than it's, it's worth. We're going to put our lemony colored and yellow colored. It's like lemonade, actually. That's what this is. It's more like lemonade, but it's, it's not super yellow. So we've got some of those. Let's get our black and gold beads right in here. I'm going to put my orange beads right here and orange adjacent. Got my gray beads here. Am I going to have enough sections for everybody? I think we're going to find out. It's possible that I might need to move my charms and things into the same section that I've put my clasps. We'll find out when we get there. All right, so let's get our purples and pinks. I think I'm gonna combine purples and pinks, maybe. Or maybe just purples by itself. No, I've got enough room for these small pink ones to go in there that that'll work. Combining the purples and pinks means that they'll be able to be all together. I'm going to grab my AB finish guys. I'm going to grab my blue guys. I'm going to put these bead cages in here with my chain. Let's put our red guys in here. Whoop. All right. Now, all of these, these coin beads, the wavy coins, the wavy ovals, they're all going in there. And I need to be able to add a few more things in here. I'm going to put these guys up in here. My little spacers and my connectors. And I am going to move my charms and tassels into the same section that I have my... clasps. This was a very full box. So that's all of these guys plus these connectors plus this pendant plus plus this giant tassel for Judith and the Head of Hall of Furnace. Oh, take a look at that. That is a fantastic bale up here at the top of this. This is metal. It is firm and this is a leather tassel. Oh, this is this is fanciness. This is a fancy fancy things. All right. And then don't think I forgot about these. We have these two charms too. I don't think these are all going to fit in this Oh, they fell right out of that, that, okay, okay, I can, I can find them, don't worry. All right, and while I was down there, I went ahead and found that cloth and I ate that, uh, rolled away. All right, so then we've got these guys too. And they're a little bit big to fit in any of these and I haven't set anything down so they're just gonna have to be I'm gonna keep them where I keep this guy and oh 
that's right. I almost forgot. But I didn't. We also have the wire. Where did I set that wire? It was right here. Okay, so this wire. Let's take a look at the wire and compare it with some known gauges that I have. We have silver, gold, and black wire. It feels like 22 gauge. Let me just scoop, scoop this out real quick. And grab some 22 gauge wire. Where is it? Yep, this is 22 gauge. So you've got 22 gauge in silver, gold, and black. This is pretty fun. I might do some earrings with the two color hoops. I've done those before. They're one of my favorite things to make, but maybe we'll do them with either the silver and black or some gold and black. And then we'll add some of these beads in there with it. I think that'll be a good project to do with this box. But I am, I am pleased with this box. I am really happy that, um, really happy that I went ahead and kept on with my subscription with Jesse James Beads. Um, like I said, because they are so good at creating like an entire experience with their box. I think they blew it out of the park. They hit it out of the park with this one. Um, there are so many cool components that we're going to be able to use with this box. There are so many wonderful colors of beads and sets of beads in here. And it's just a really great box, I think. And I don't really feel like there's anything out of place for the theme that we had. And this is one of those symbols, by the way, when I was talking about like because he was a symbolist, like there's going to be squirrels and, and, uh, what are they called? The, um, especially if you look at it, like the tree of life painting of his, um, there's a ton of the, the spiral colors. They're one of the symbols that he uses in that. And so are like the, the flowers and these square and rectangular shapes. So like all of these beads fit in with the art that was produced by this artist. Um, so this is this is a fantastic box. Like you can see the spirals there, right there. Yeah, it's 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 definitely definitely going to be a really fun box to make with, and I am looking forward to doing that. So thank you for hanging out with me. Let me know if you got this box, um, and uh, how you feel about it. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.